Naveen Raheja Raheja developers. Coming back to power, shall your government fast track online clearances of uh, government licenses and permissions, uh, online selections and appointments on merit basis? That is, it should be online instead of going through the bureaucratic process of uh, getting all the clearances on every table, you know. Number one. And number two, fast-track nuclear defense shield under special program. This question number two. Thank you. So far, the last question is concerned. Our nuclear policy is well known. Our nuclear doctrine is clear. We do not believe that nuclear weapons is an weapon for winning a battle. We believe it is for distractions of large masses of human beings. But our exercises which we had in 1974 or in 1998 was to have a credible deterrence. That's why you have said no first use, no use against non-nuclear weapon states, and third, to have credible deterrence and to inflict unacceptable damage to those who will dare to attack us with nuclear devices. But at the same time, our commitment for total, universal, verifiable nuclear disarmament is there. That's why we are actively engaging ourselves with various disarmament conventions under the United Nations. Even in my own statement, on 6th of September, immediately before the nuclear supplier groups cleared and gave us a clean waiver for our nuclear, civil nuclear cooperation agreement with USA, I reiterated that time-tested policies which I have just narrated. In respect to the first question, there cannot be an any omnibus legislations like that which you are talking of. There are certain areas where state's intervention is needed, but many more areas are there where state's intervention is not called for. But it cannot be put in one omnibus legislation in a developing economy like ours, it is not possible. Thank you. Okay, what about online? You answered the question. Huh? Online clearances of all the projects. With the development of the te technology, as and when it will be expanded, that may be possible and it may be feasible. But that is the reason, because so many applications are going from one ministry to another. Therefore, anyway, you would like me. Yeah, please, no. Online, that, I meant, think, I online think meant so that we don't have to go from bureaucratic procedures from table to table and it goes through a no, we have net. Through you can just in, access in internet series, and get your clearance. I'm sorry, in series of measures we have already done it, for instance, even supply, uh, just applying for the income tax returns or getting the informations. We have done it, but it depends on the level of the technological department, technological development, even in the court the e-governance computerization process which we have undertaken, where all the legal documents you can submit through that. But for that, you require a certain level of development, and we are trying to attempt it. E-governance is one of the most key objective of this government, and even it was earlier government, they also began it. Yeah, please introduce yourself. Srivatsa Krishna, I'm a civil servant. Mr. Minister, my question is, when I look upon the five years of your government, 
On the most fundamental issue, security, the government had specific actionable intelligence on the Mumbai attacks. It could do nothing. On infrastructure, on roads, by our own NHAI's documents, it shows a 26% completion rate on the National Highway Development Program, having spent 59,000 crores. And this includes the roads which were developed during the preceding government's time. On power, out of the 89,000 megawatts coming up under private power capacity, in as many as 88 to 90% of this, there is no land acquisition which has happened. There is no financial closure which has happened. In 57%, there's no fuel linkage which has been provided. The record is no better in education or in health. Why should we vote for you, Mr. Minister? <laughs> Performance is always relative. You are to compare, you are to compare with whom you want to cast your vote and with whom you want to entrust the responsibility of running the government. And I leave it to the judgment of 700 million electors who are going to cast their votes in five pages. <laughs> Any question? Anywhere? Yeah, please. General Malik. Two major requirements to bring about change today uh, are, um, one, I believe, the caliber of the political leaders that we induct in our parliament. And number two, from security point of view, I think police reforms are absolutely essential. Now we've seen two governments, um, one of the NDA before and of the UPA this time. Unfortunately, uh, no major, no initiative really has been taken. Although the courts have said, uh, they have even uh, given uh, certain recommendations and asked states to carry out all these things. Now I know that it is not the government alone which can bring about these two changes. It has to work with the opposition parties. It has to work within the parliament but uh, what do you think ought to be done to bring about these two changes as expeditiously as possible? First of all, in regard to the functioning of our parliament, from my own experiences, I can tell you, this is my 40th year in Indian parliament. I entered into 1969 in 1969 to Rajasabha as a member of that house. It is true that if you look at the public debate, which is televised nowadays, many a times we feel frustrated. It is equally true when we make comparison. I just make one comparison that when our volume of financial transaction was almost peanut compared to ours. As some of you may be knowing, our first budget was 293 crores of rupees total expenditure. 91 crores on military expenditure, 102 crores on civil expenditure. There was no plan, there was no, and rate of taxes were also very simple, 176 crores tax. 116 crores income tax, 50 crores customs duty, and two and a half crores a special tax Im <coughs> imposed on imported alcoholic drinks. That was the level of financial transaction. Even the first five-year plan, the total outlay was little more than 4,000 crores of rupees. But parliament devoted a lot of time on money, finance, legislations. Two days when you compare, that much time is not being devoted, though the transactions, as you know, this year's the interim budget which I presented, the total expenditure volume is more than 9 lakh crores of rupees. But one major change has taken place outside the glare of publicity, that is in the committees, parliamentary committees, the same members of parliament. 
when they sit in 24 parliamentary standing committees, and it is almost nowadays because of the volume of business, and as there is no publicity, no need of playing to the gallery, the devotion with which the members in the committee transact business, these are published documents. Anybody can have access to the report of the various standing committees on large number of issues, three major areas of their operation. One is expenditure scrutiny, another is policy scrutiny, and third is the legislation. If you go through it, then you yourself will be surprised the type of devotion, the type of quality of work which has emerged from that. But I do admit, because of certain approach, and sometimes not only speaker, we ourselves have expressed our dissatisfaction, that debate on the floor is not up to the expected and desired level. This type of committee system in Indian parliament was not there before the 90s. Second aspect, and about the uh, questions of... What was the second question? Here is the question, the second question. Security here. and Security. police modernization. It is true. If you look at the... And good documents have been brought out by Bureau of uh, Police Research. Firstly, our population police ratio is abnormally low compared to any country. But I'm not going to find the excuses. Modernization of the police forces, improvement of their mobility, equipping them with the modern techniques is absolutely necessary. And if you look at the efforts made by all these governments during these years for the modernization of the police forces. Backed by the adequate financial allocation, improvements are taking place. But you shall have to keep in mind, there is a competition, if I can say so, that the non-state actors who are indulging in terrorist and other type of subversive activities they are more aggressive in these areas. They have more access to it. True. And that's why sometimes we find even in USA, nobody could predict that 9-11 will take place. Or in the more sophisticated economy and administration, the attack on London Met <coughs> Metro, or the terrorist activities in some other parts of Europe, because today, the non-state actors have much more access because of certain reasons. So we shall have to prepare it. And this is an exercise which is to be carried on constantly. There cannot be stop and go. It comes up to that. The third point here I would like to repeat, what was being repeated. Biggest deterrent is fear of death. And it prevents the culprits to commit crime. But if somehow somebody overcomes that fear, then that deterrent does not work until today. It may be very unacceptable position, but it is the ground reality. No weapon has been discovered to counter the human bombs or suicide attacks. It can be prevented. But if somebody is determined, sometimes it becomes absolutely impossible to tackle with. Several times this has been <coughs> indicated by the suicide terrorist attacks. But that does not mean all necessary precautions and improvement of the steps should be taken. And this is being taken. I, th I think I'll ask some question there. But the Please take the microphone. Mike, please. Sir, I, I regret, um, I think both my questions have been answered uh, partially only. In the, in the first part of my question, when I talked about the political leadership, 
why can't we prevent people who have got uh, disciplinary charges, criminal charges against them from coming into the parliament? And the second, as far as the police reforms is concerned, today the biggest problem that we face is the political interference at the, uh, with the, in the police, uh, even at the Thana level, what to talk of uh, the senior positions. But unless we, we stop political interference at such a level, there can be, uh, there can be no professionalism uh, in the force. First of all, you have to make a line determine that who is a criminal. Indian electoral laws, Indian penal code, prevents anybody to be a candidate who is accused and sentenced up of two years imprisonment by moral turpitude. But somebody must be found guilty by an independent judicial tribunal. It can be neither articulated through media or can individual perceptions. When you file the nomination, even today, you are to give an account of your entire record when you have been arrested, even after violating the 144, section 144, <coughs> for political demonstrations. Every account is to be given. Those are displayed. Those are publicized in the media before the election takes place at the time of filing nomination, starting from assets and other things. Therefore, these measures have already been taken. These are in operation. In three elections, it has been demonstrated. That's why you will find that so many people have charge seated. But mere charge seated is not the proof that he has been convicted by the tribunal, by the court. If somebody has been convicted, and the punishment is for two years, jail sentence of moral turpitude, he is disqualified. And responsive of the parliament, you shall have to see it. In this 14th Lok Sabha, parliament itself, Lok Sabha itself, has dispensed with the membership of 16 members for their misdemeanor. Therefore, it is not correct that self-correcting measures are not being taken. It is being taken. And these information are available. It is no secret information. And if I remember correctly, in the first parliament, only one member was expelled. Another two members were expelled. I am not going into that highly political controversy, including one former Prime Minister who was expelled from the membership of Lok Sabha for breach of privilege of the House. But this time as many as 16 members for their misdemeanor have been, their membership have been terminated. One to agree that in the system itself has the self-correcting process. This is in response, I thought that you have these information and this legal position is no, nobody can file nomination paper unless he gives the record. And this Tiwari told me once that, look, two pages I had to give the record, how many times I was arrested by police for violating section 144 of the IPC. Because for political activities, demonstration, those details are also to be given nowadays. Mr. Mukherjee, the question is, do you agree in principle that people who are charged with criminal offences, uh, those who are charged with criminal offences, they should be denied ticket by the political parties themselves? You are referring to the judicial, of course, that judiciary, uh, you know how judiciary no, functions. this. political Why political parties cannot take a decision that, okay, we will debar political criminals from contesting election. If you don't give ticket, they will never contest. Political parties sometimes their response to the people's urge and demand. But the fact is that there are legal arrangements there. Secondly, political parties may not give tickets, but that does not prevent a person charge seated to contest on independent. Because 
every citizen of this country who, ha who is not otherwise disqualified <laughs> can seek the election. But are, any other, other question, anybody from the... Where, please? Yeah. Thank you very much for a very good exposition. But the criminal justice system is totally in shambles. Uh, this is one front where the government has totally failed. That's why people take resource to gangsters, private armies, other things. I can tell you about the CBI cases also. have been pending 25 to 30 years. Delhi High Court made a calculation that for every case, they give five minutes, which the case which is dis disposed of. And a magazine carried a chart which showed that in Tamil Nadu, if you want to dispose of the pending cases at the rate of five minutes case per high, in the high court, it will take 60 years. A chief justice calculated it will take 325 years to reduce the present pendency with the present strength. I think unless you can ensure quick justice to, fail, to the people, the entire governance comes to a standstill. Uh, I know the, the government has got a few months more to go till it comes back to power again. But what is the long-term plan that when, you, if and when you come back, how you will put the things right? Because this is a, something which touches every person, every policeman. And then you have also, I think you mentioned correctly here that legislation work has increased. The recent amendment to the laws that police will not arrest a person where punishment is seven years, except for a few offenses, I think will embolden the criminals. No, it was not even debated. 17 bills were passed, I think sometime in about 19 minutes on 23rd December. I'd like to know from you, sir, what you feel about it. For instance, in these matters, for the judicial reforms, the various recommendations have been made. Judicial Reforms Commission has also been in the process of deciding certain, taking certain other steps. One thing I can tell you, to reduce the pendency of the court cases, clubbing the cases together and disposing of, providing the computerization facilities and other modern method of the documentations, filling in the vacancies quickly. But sometimes I would not hesitate to create that we complicate the problems in order to resolve these issues. I would not like to go in details because everybody knows but we shall have to always keep in mind that always there should be a check and balance. You have complained that police lack of detention power in large number of cases is emboldening the criminals. It may be one side of the story. Other side of the story is misuse of power at the various levels. When you give unbridled power, That's, those stories are also there. Therefore, always it will have to strike a balance. And that balance is, without compromising the individual dignity, individual liberty, at the same time to act as the deterrence for crimes, not merely by taking penal measures, but also creating the awareness. These are to be done, these are to be taken. And this is the problems of every society, including ours. And these problems are to be tackled with care and patience. This much I can tell. Anyway, I think uh, I'll ask the last question. You said in your initial remarks that there is always resistance to change. I'm asking a very blunt question, and I think because government, role of government has to be reduced. That's the consensus everywhere these days. Now I see you've got the largest cabinet ever since independence. Do you need 33 cabinet ministers and total of 72 ministers when Mrs. Gandhi could run this government for 17 cabinet ministers and only 42 ministers? Do you think that is necessary or it's a price for coalition? You know, situations should be compared between comparable situations. <laughs> If you have clear two-third majority, if I remember correctly, Mrs. Gandhi lost only once in 1977. Otherwise, 
she became prime minister in 66. She won 67 general election, though with a slender margin, 71 with a massive margin, two-third majority. 1980 with a massive margin, two-third majority. A political leader having undisputed position in the ruling party, having overwhelming majority on the floor of the house, the type of maneuverability he or she has in selecting the cabinet colleagues cannot be compared with a large coalition government having not adequate support on the floor of the house. Therefore, these two situations are not comparable. And complexities of the administration has also increased, and it is every day expanding. Earlier, all these are published documents if you look at even in the debate of the parliament. Never the local issues were debated. But today, in parliament, which is essentially a subject to be considered under panchayats or under a local body, is being debated there. More and more what we demand, that state should have more authorities, more power, local bodies should have more power, more authorities, and more and more devolution we are doing. But equally, the responsibility is being transferred to the union. That is also a situation which we shall have to correct it. Of course, it requires much more in-depth studies, including the constitutional amendment. But this much I can tell you, number is not the factor, but the UPA government despite so many constraints, what they have been able to achieve, as I told in one question, I leave it to the judgment of the elector when they are going for the time to give their judgment. Let us see what happens. As a thing, I think you avoided the question anyway. I can't force you. But I would like to correct. If I'm wrong, please correct me. You said because of coalition, we are not able to contain the number of cabinet ministers. I will remind you, Rajiv Gandhi had 400 MPs, and he had a cabinet of about 65 people. So that is not probably applicable, and because number of ministers going up because of different compulsions, and number of secretaries in 1980 was about 300. Now there are about 700 people who hold the secretary line office level. That but, means but please coming back to the size of the population. <laughs> somebody <laughs> had to administer 35 crores people, and today somebody is to administer 112 crores people. The, 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 Therefore, can you think that this structure would remain the same? <laughs> so I will not get into argument. Now we need, because of that, NRI Affairs Minister, Minority Affairs Minister, Water Resources Minister, Energy, all that people are required. Okay, but question still remains whether government is a facilitator or an hindrance. Because if the role of the government doesn't go down, I think government remain an hindrance. But you have promised us, yes, there will be less of government. It will be a more regulator than interventionist government. Thank you very much, Mr. Mukherjee, for coming.